Hi, good morning. This is Wayne Belial, and welcome to another Smart Profit Maximizer moment. Uh, again, I'm Wayne Belial. I'm a local CPA. I've been working with small business owners too darn long. <laughs> I literally passed the CPA exam in 1977 and really have been working in small business ever since, to be truthful about it, and helping them. And that's why it's, you know, I call myself the, the Smart Profit Maximizer um, because I've been helping them pro maximize their profits as much as possible. And since the T is the tax part, help them keep as much as possible. Uh, today we're going to talk about no pain, no change. <laughs> I've always joked that above my conference room over here, I should have that sign, no pain, no change. Because that seems to be the only time that we see our clients, <laughs> when, except for tax time and things like that, is when they have a problem. Um, as business owners, I'm guilty of it too, we all fall into a trap. When things are going well, and the money is flowing in, we think everything is fine. And we think, you know, we're geniuses. Look at what we created, look at how far we're going, look at what we're doing. And uh, what I often hear is, well, it's not broke, why fix it? Then something goes wrong, all right? They come in and, and truthfully, this is a little rant here. This is a little complaint I have about most people and most CPAs in my profession. We're very reactive as opposed to proactive. We wait for the problem. And then we come in as the white knight and try to solve it. Okay, So, for example, we have somebody come in and we immediately go into triage. All right, We break them into three categories. Yeah, we can help you, but uh, you don't have the money to afford it at this point. So, here's some things you could try, you know, but good luck. Um, you, yeah, we can help. You definitely still can afford to pay us, so we'll help you. And you, well, God bless you. Here's the name of the bankruptcy attorney. Should have came to me earlier. That's a reactive mode, all right? Very much not what we want, all right? I'm a strong believer in proactive, and that's kind of along the lines of, I mean, it's exactly why I've had the blog since 2010, why I've started doing these memos, is in these moments, you know, these video blogs, um, is to be able to get people to think about things, hopefully, in advance and to start planning for them. Because the truth of the matter is, we live in a very fast-changing world. What works today probably won't work tomorrow. You know, I can almost guarantee it won't. Um, for over 100 years, CPA firms were run the same way. You picked up some tax work, you picked up some bookkeeping work, you did some audit work, and you built it up slowly, and then you could pass it or sell it. You know, it was simple as that. I had the good luck to start my practice in 1991 and have had to change my business model. This is the fourth time that I'm changing things, all right? Why? Technology, social media, the changes are happening very, very fast. So what, like again said, I'm gonna say it again, what's working for you today or what's worked for you in the past most likely won't work for you in the future. And it's highly dangerous to assume it will. Think Blockbuster. You know, they had a business model. They owned it. They were the, they were it. Quite frankly, if they would have been doing their SWOT analysis, and we'll talk about that another time, stress, strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, threat is what that stands for. Look it up. Um, it's everywhere. It's a commonly used tool that I've used, too. It works quite well. Um, they would have seen what Redbox saw, what Netflix saw. They should have been both of those. They had the wherewithal. Matter of fact, there's a rumor, and I don't know, I've never really went and looked at it, but there's a rumor that the Netflix guys tried to get Blockbuster to invest, and they said, no, that's not going to work. The speeds are too slow. Well, of course, everything in technology gets better. So, you know, they, they didn't see the home mobility that network has created at this moment. All right? Well, that's too far in the past. In the recent news, Sears and uh, Toys R Us are gone. I mean, visits to Toys R Us once a month were kind of a reward, or more often sometimes, for my kids when they were growing up, you know, and they're gone. Sears has been a staple since the 1800s, and they're almost gone. You know, they're hanging on by a thread. Kmart's, remember them? What happened to them? Amazon. When that first came out, everybody was like, oh, people are still going to want to shop. Well, yeah, they want to shop. Doesn't mean they're going to buy from you, but they want to shop. Again, what's working for you now, I can guarantee you, is not going to work 
and what's worked for you in the past, not going to work for you in the future. It's as simple as that. All right. You should always be fixing things and improving your business and looking at maybe you should be changing the whole model. Like I said, I have redone my firm. I think I'm on the third or fourth change, you know, and we're not talking about minor little tinkering. Okay. Failing to do so, like I said, can you lead to huge problems? You could be losing market share and not even realize it. All right. What if a competitor works around the corner? Look, even if you're doing something right, I had a client who, um, you know, opens a medical supply store and only went around. He's doing a lot of things right, obviously. He was the first one, broke ground in El Paso. There's three or four others, well, at least three, you know, that have opened now. So even if you're doing things right, your competitors or somebody's going to come in and see what you're doing and undercut it or try to take a piece of that, all right? So always things are changing, all right? We should always be adapting then to the ever-changing business landscape. And a SWOT analysis, and I probably will spend some time on that at some point in the future, is something that you should be doing at least once a year. All right? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You could also be losing customers to just flat-out lazy customer service or just simply indifference, which is the main reason customers leave. They just don't think you care. All right? Another subject that we should spend more time on. And then as you grow, we tend to waste cash. Um, I have yet to work with a business that we, and including my own, and did this last year, where I couldn't reduce expenses dramatically because as you grow, you feel you need this and you need that. And things that you wouldn't have done when you first started now are important, all right? Um, worse still, you could be limiting your growth, pro pro your profit growth by not working and improving your bottom line. This is a situation I see in 99% of small businesses. They're so busy putting out fires that they really don't have time to grow their business, to think about a profit plan. You know, when I say grow your business, I don't care about sales. You know, it's important, obviously. I need to sell. A business without sales is called a, is called a hobby. <laughs> what I'm talking about is your bottom line. All right, and you know they they don't worry about that. They're simply putting out the fires, making sure the product gets delivered, trying to find the next sale until the cash dries up when they can't make payroll, when they can't pay their bills, and they can't pay themselves what they're worth. I mean, they might pay themselves something. Finally, at this point, the business owner will admit that they have a problem and start looking for a solution. Not even working on it. Start looking for a solution. Now it hurts. Now there's pain. Now they know they must change. And even then, a lot of them won't. Man, this worked. It's just a temporary down, down cycle in the economy. It's only... Uh, you know, I can't get good employees, you know, a myriad of excuses. I always come up with, well, you know, your competitors are getting good employees. <laughs> Why can't you? All right. Look, one of the main points to get across here then is why wait for it to hurt? Okay. The time to fix the problem is before it hurts. Matter of fact, the time to identify the problem is before it even comes. And like I said, I've changed my business model a few times, always because I saw a trend. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, those last two. I either saw an opportunity that nobody else was taking advantage of, for example, our tax planning. Nobody in town is doing it the way we're doing it. All right. Or I saw a threat on the horizon, for example, QuickBooks when it came out. Or TurboTax when it's, now it's free. You need a free CPA to help you out, which actually um, is there kind of cheapening the brand, that's another discussion for another time. And how to attack that is, is instructive, all right? Um, but, you know, how you address that is important. And what you do is important. So, my challenge to you is why wait for it to hurt, all right? The time to fix the problem is now. Start looking at your business now. Decide what you can change to have massive profits, not just surviving, not just putting out fires. Until next time, this is Wayne Bilal saying, let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.